Welcome to the podcast, Hass Discusses. I'm my host, Michael Haspin, and, you know, I usually do interviews on this show, but it, it, how this started was it was just a couple episodes of Cast, the show prior to this, which I will eventually do a return to that, but, you know, certain situations have occurred where I want to make reviews of music and films and television and even novels, graphic novels as well, on this podcast, Has Discusses. Eventually there will be a return to Has Discusses and it will be formed into something else. And when you see it on the playlist on YouTube, it'll, it'll be on the same playlist, but it will be under a different name. Not I do plan on changing my legal name, but that's besides the point. The point that I'm trying to make is Has Discusses will come back the reviewing and analysis of content in podcast form will come back. Now, I would like to change the uh, setup visually. The visual setup will, it won't be there. It'll just be an image on a screen on YouTube, and I want you to just listen because there was so much time being put into the setup of the visuals that it was hard to even make the content good itself, like the talking, right? So what I want to do is have notes in front of me, and when... You're doing it not on camera. There's more of an ability to analyze deeply and look at stuff and maybe even listen to stuff without it interacting with, you know, the quality of the video. You know, you can just focus on the words being said. So now that we've gotten past the point of the distribution of reviews and podcasts of content, I would like to talk about what we're going to be reviewing today. Now, this album was released in 2016, October 11th, uh, so it's almost the sixth year anniversary, but it's five years old, because uh, it is as of recording this, it's October 2nd, 2022. Now, this is released by MC Holocaust, and this is when he recently changed his name within the couple years before this. He recently changed his name to MC Holocaust, but before this, it was D's Nuts. I'm not going to go over the spelling of it, but if you look up D's Nuts, how it's normally spelled, that won't come up. He spelled it with basically the Raider Clan hieroglyphics that everyone was doing at the time, and people still do. I really want people to do it, and when I, you know, release my music under a bunch of different names, because I'm not just going to release it under the one name that you see it as, I've already built another name, which is a DJ name. You'll, you'll, you'll know it when you see it. I do plan on using more hieroglyphics and bringing that back with my music group. We're not going to get too much into that, but this was after the release of Hurt the World. Now, Hurt the World was a, a, a stepping stone for MC Holocaust and really solidifying him in the game. The D's Nuts stuff was very successful, but after he released Hurt the World, the, the you know collaborations on that and the tracks themselves were just iconic. The tracks on Hurt the World that I really would like to shout out would be Netflix and Kill and Gank Moves. Gank Moves is one of the best songs ever. There's production from Baker, uh, DJ Sacred on this, a lot of other musicians, and there's even a Mr. OG Tint as on this as well. And these the, these songs are iconic, and that that was really when Doomshot really came into its own around 2015, around 2016. That was also around the time the uh, first Doom Shop project was released. And, you know, people often contribute a lot of other artists to Doom Shop, like, you know, like Soul Jose and, like, you know, Ned Bundy and all those guys. But really on the first mixtape, what you would see the most would be Freddie Dredd and um, even I think Dreddy Franks was on it as well, but I don't know if he was a member, and Occult and MC Holocaust. Those were, like, the main guys that were really doing it on the first mixtapes. And then the second mixtapes is when you see the main roster with all the other artists on it. But around the time, it was mainly just, you know, MC Holocaust, Freddy Dredd, and uh, fucking Occult. That those were who was on that shit, too. So around the time, like, MC Holocaust was way more prominently uh, operating this. And a lot of the later members that joined weren't a member of it, like Solze and other artists and stuff like that, because around 2018 to 2019 is when they really kicked off. But around this time, MC Holocaust was dropping way more consistently than he does now. I would like to see him, you know, drop some new shit, and he's always on Twitter chopping it up, talking about it, but I really wish there would, there would be another, you know, good era for MC Holocaust, but I know that he's kind of in a sort of hiatus, if you will, because the initial rush of Doom Shop in 2018 to 2019, 2017 was a very good era. There were so much shows being done, but now it's, you're not seeing that that much. 
I do like the success of Freddie Dread, and I do like how Solze is really elevating his music and the quality and the way he just differentiates it from the way funk is usually done. He's he's beyond funk, like what Solze has been doing. But I don't think MC Holocaust has really caught up to a lot of the artists in Doom Shop, but I think that if he really puts forth the effort, he, he will and he can. Same with Curse, because Curse is not really that consistent with dropping, but everything that he drops is usually a banger. Now let's get right into this review of the album Concentration Camp. Now there's two sides to this. There's Animosity and Side B, a little sum for you bitches. Now the, the first you know way I listened to this was the Dat Piff version, because I, just, I love the old mixtape websites, and there's way more tracks on that one, uh, but a lot of them were distributed on more smaller EPs, but the main track list of this contains of 15 tracks plus a bonus track, which is not on the Dat Piff version. Now, I really want to go into the highlights of producers that are on this. Now, the best producers that you'll see on this would be Kevin the Creep, DJ Sacred, and Apoc Crisis. Those three really take over this mixtape. But there is other standout productions on this, such as I Ain't Going by Tyrus Wright, which is one of the best instrumentals ever. And Anna for the World is, the bass in it is like, I got a new car, I forget, it was a 2022 Elantra a while back. Um, a while back, it's fucking 2022, what the fuck am I talking about? But I, I played that in the bass because I wanted to show you know, what, what, what this bass in the car could do. And the best song for that was Anna for the World with, you know, Play Misery and Little Holly Point, which is basically just MC Holocaust and Cursed. But another song that I do like to show people, like when I introduce them to MC Holocaust, is the second song on this project, and that's Apocalypse Farewell. I've done a reaction to this on my channel, and even MC Holocaust himself has posted it. And after I saw that, I started reaching out to him more, and, you know, I eventually have had a couple conversations with him with regards of licensing his music in one of my films. But this is the song that really, what I, what I show people when I want to show them uh, MC Holocaust, it has some of his best lines, and this is what I described in the reaction on my YouTube channel about this, is that it's like this, it's like in music form of the Flash Forwards and Terminator with the Apocalypse. That's what it, it sounds like. You know, the lines in it, like, are bitch, I'd rather, like, my favorite lines in the song are bitch, I'd rather go to hell, Apocalypse, farewell. There's another line, um, trying to get uh, trying to get saved, I'm trying to get paid. Like, it's, it's like, you know, it's the, the complete annihilation of others. There's this other song, and I forget, I think it's Hellbent Misfit, where there's some a sample of uh, a fucking, like, black metal or some shit, and someone's like, I'm here to make rock and roll to annihilate. I hate all you motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's the mentality he's bringing with the shit is fuck all you motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? He's got that dirty grind fiend shit on the cover. You feel me? Like, that's what he's going for. He's going for this complete annihilation. You know what I'm saying? It, it, even in Ghetto Hitler, the little fucking metal break at the end, like the sample at the end, it, it's this perfect blend of, like, metal and funk and, like, fucking Memphis rap and shit. Like, the way he makes his vocals, like, a lot of people, like, see that shit and they're like, oh, I can barely hear it, bro. I mean, even myself, I've gone and remastered a couple of, like, his songs and, like, done an acapella, put a layer on it, mixed it, you know what I'm saying? Like, found that shit because, you know, I'm a fan and I listen to, I want to listen to shit on my own and hear the lyrics more. But you, you got to understand what he's going for. He's going for making it sound old. And I like that most of his songs just sound like he just does, like, a couple takes and barely mixes it because it's not really, like, about the fucking mixing. Like, like, what, you're going to get Mike Dean to mix your shit? No, you're not. You know what I mean? Most of the people that make really good music are just young boys in their fucking crib trying it out. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you got to be on fucking Columbia to have, like, good mixing. You can mix your shit on your own and make it sound good. But I think that MC Holocaust has this perfectly, like, done annihilation energy to his fucking tracks. Like, like a War Hungry, the way you're, you're completely jolted when that bass fucking drops with the production from Lord of the Rings. And on that shit, he's like, I think that's the one where he's like, introduce you to a mech named Holocaust. That's like, what? Like, it's like, yeah, fuck that shit. Like, yeah. I'm gonna play this shit right 
Like he's got, I'm talking about like one in the chamber. You, t- you know what I'm saying? Like that's what he's doing on that shit. Like he, he's just trying to annihilate the fucking listener with that shit. And and when you listen to it, you, you know you gotta be prepared to have some motherfucker screaming in your face. You feel me? Like some possessed shit. Like this motherfucker sounds p- possessed when he's fucking rapping. You feel me? Like and none, none of y'all can can really understand that shit. Like when you when you looking you're looking for some like. Fucking calm, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's able to do that calm shit, but even when he's doing that calm shit, like, when I ain't going, he's talking about my pimping strategic, fuck with me, get deleted. It's like, what? The beat sounds like the most chillest shit, but he's on there, and he's, like, completely annihilating your fucking ears in the most calmest way. So, in order I really got after listening to this project is that he's just a calm demon. You feel me? Like, he's a calm demon. You know what I'm saying? Like, he can make that calm shit, but he's also on that demon shit. And that's why I really fuck with how he does shit. Like, nobody's really doing it like him. You know what I'm saying? That's why I really fuck with his music. And the way him and fucking DJ Sacred are, are doing shit on this, him and DJ Sacred have some of the best production you will ever hear from, you know, you, like like the way an artist and produ- produ- producer ma- go together They'll do good. Like, fucking and Execute Me Gospel. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the best. It's not on this album, but... Fucking Execute Me Gospel is one of the best funk songs ever made. The lyrics are just so riveting. They're, they're haunting, but they're also really relatable. Because uh, people that do funk, or listen to funk, it's not local. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not supposed to be understood by everyone you really have to be in a certain place in your life to understand funk music to understand the lyrics that you're supposed to rap about and supposed to talk about it's not supposed to be some shit on the radio that's supposed to be happy it's not some turn up the music and i'm gonna be all right like no that's not that shit that's not what you're supposed to talk like you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to talk about, like, mind of Hitler never sang, so execute me like Hussein. You feel me? And, and, and I think that's what you're trying to, you're trying to, you, you got to annihilate your feelings when you're making funk music. You got to annihilate the, the listener's feelings. You got to make sure you get into their heart. You know what I mean? You can't be turning up the music. I'm, like, no, you ain't going to be all right. Like, no, it, it gets way worse before it gets better. And even when it gets better, it's going to get worse again. You know what I'm saying? Like, Good music shows the sadness and darkness of reality. You know what I mean? Like, you can make positive music, but that's, it's so, positive music is usually filler. It's usually something that you want to do when you take your mind off it. But for, for me, I listen to music to not take my mind off shit. Like, I'm just going to be straight up. I can't take my mind off bad shit that happens to me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit here and act like everything's okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going through some shit on my life. I can't even talk about that shit. But it's like, you know what I mean? Like, not everything's going to be alright. You feel me? And that's what I like about this shit. It shows the grim fucking reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and, and there's even some, like, fucking quotes about, like, uh, like, you better, but, well, this one of the girls is like, I'm trying to explore, and he's like, you trying, you better explore this pimping, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I heard on, on this type of shit. It's like, it, it's some grimy shit. Like, if you want some grimy shit for your ears, this is what you gotta listen to. You, you you can't be... If you're looking for some positive, fun shit, like, nah. This is some shit to listen to alone. Okay, there's a couple songs you can play out loud in front of people. Get lit with that shit. Apocalypse Farewell would be one of them. Let me think of another one. Anna vs. The World, if you really want to test your fucking bass. Um, let me think. What, what's another song that you could, you could fucking... Let me think. Nah, I don't know. But, but yeah, there's not so many songs you can play around people, but that's okay. You don't gotta, like, fucking, you know what I mean? Like, play every fucking song around people. Um, music is best when you're alone, you're able to and then analyze that shit. I will go into, you know, some songs by MC Holocaust that you should play around other people. Gank Moves is always a classic. It's the 808s are just bumping. It's some shit that you gotta hear people. I mean, the, the lyrics are completely obnoxious. And and obviously, it's not on this album. Um, yeah, that, that one is off of Corrupt from the get-go. Uh, would definitely recommend that shit. Uh, let me think of another one. 
Um, mad, sad, happy at the same time is always good. Um, never On Never Ending Fade, there's a song called Alone Again. Now, that samples um, Mac DeMarco's... I forget. But some Mac DeMarco shit. Some people hear it up and be like, oh shit, Mac DeMarco. And they don't hear like... Um, Fucking hot, cold, then North Pole, and then the oh shit, you feel me? Now, um, what has been sampled so many times by MC Hawkwalls would be "Make You Reminisce." That shit is really something that you you guys should look into because that's like a, that's a good representation. I, I'd say that's one of the best representations of what funk can be because when you listen to it, it just sounds like it's from the '90s. The quality is very lo-fi. And the percussion doesn't even have a melody in it. It has like a small perk melody, like you know what I'm saying. But but that's the point. It is like you look at uh, Gankin' Fools by Shawty Pimp. I think that's his name. Doesn't have a melody, and it's one of the best funks. I mean, better one of the best old Memphis songs of all time. Like that's what that was going for, and it, that's one of uh, Ryan C's best productions on Make You Reminisce. So you can play it around people if you want to show them what funk is like, but if you're around a bunch of people, don't play that shit. <laughs> like, it's pretty, it's not like, you know what I'm saying, like, it's not like the most, like, accessible song to the ears if you don't like that shit. Uh, D'Angelo Gentrification is good if you want to play some introspective shit around people, but most people aren't going to go for that shit. And let me think of one more song that you can play around the friends, around the homies. Um... One of the Tyrus Wright songs. I mean, besides I Ain't Going, you could play that shit and people feel good. But Then Hunter Dreams is always something I love to listen to. And if you're, you know, around a couple friends and you want to have some chill shit, you got some bud, Then Hunter Dreams is some good shit. You know what I mean? I, I would definitely recommend showing that around some friends. But in general, I definitely would recommend sitting down, you know, doing your fucking... If you're at work, you know what I'm saying? If you're on a gym, listen to... A gym, this is great gym music. I was just listening to this mixtape at Planet Fitness. This is some shit to listen to. Concentration Camp by MC Holocaust. That is, that is what you should listen to if you're fucking like at the gym. It's something that you definitely should check out. I will plan on doing more uh, MC Holocaust album reviews. I know I did cover a lot of non-concentration camp uh albums on this but I do want to analyze every single uh, album by him I do want to um, do a review of Cursed Temple of Doom because I'm just a huge Cursed fan um, and the song with um, Ramirez on that is good but also coming up for an island foe or whatever the fuck that shit's called is one of the best examples of how Drift Funk kind of got started uh, it's kind of the earliest form of Drift Funk uh that you'll see, and I think that that was like a good example of what drift funk can be as an instrumental, but also as rapping, because drift funk has gotten like more past the fucking rapping and shit. Like people only want to listen to instrumentals, and it's like, come on, let's let's listen to the rapping, because if you, you if you rap on one of those cowboy beats, it's very fun to do. You know what I'm saying? But I would say that you know, Curse and Six Set and and Doom Shop really brought that shit back. I'm just going to say it right here. They really brought that shit back, including DJ Koza. I do want to review a DJ Koza um, instrumental project, too. Maybe the first one, but the second one he did is fascinating. And I was able to purchase one of his beats on uh, Track Train from the Volume 2. So you'll expect uh, music on that, maybe even a music video on that. Uh, instrumental, I think it's, uh, it's called Never Hesitate, I did a song on that beat, but this is besides the point, let me know what you thought of this review and analysis of Concentration Camp by MC Holocaust, and uh, let me know any reaction, I mean any recommendations of reactions or podcast deep analysis of, you know, any album that you want to go over, thanks for watching this video, and peace out. Get the fuck away from me, ho, fuck, ho, like, fuck, ho, like, get the fuck away from me, ho, fuck.